What's up guys and welcome back to From The Attic. Last year I did a video talking about why Kena was my most anticipated game of 2021. So for my first video of the year I want to talk about what is currently the game I'm most excited for. And there was so many games to choose from because 2022 is looking ridiculous. And don't get me wrong, last year there was plenty of really good stuff as well. I even did a top 10 video that not a lot of people watched, but still, I think it's nothing compared to the sheer nonsense that is 2022. Just look at next month. We're getting Dying Light 2, Sifu, The Witch Queen, Horizon Forbidden West, and freaking Elden Ring. I mean, Jesus Christ, what the hell is this? But if there's one game that I'm anticipating more than the others is Hogwarts Legacy. It's not only my most anticipated game of the year, but it's probably one of my most anticipated game of all time if I'm being completely honest. I don't want to be overly excited and get my hopes up, but... Is the legacy of Hogwarts. Of course, we barely know anything about it, but the mere fact that there's an open world RPG set in Hogwarts is enough for me to get excited. And there's really one main reason why Hogwarts Legacy is the game I'm looking forward to the most. But before I jump into it, a really quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. I've been using Artlist and Artgrid for the past couple of months and I absolutely love it. If you're doing content creation and need one single ecosystem for all your video footage and music needs, then this is it. Get two extra free months with your subscription by using the referral links down below and also support the channel at the same time. With all that being said, let's talk about video games. In order to explain exactly why Hogwarts Legacy is my most anticipated game of the year, allow me to digress for a couple of minutes. Hopefully you'll know where I'm going with this. When I'm playing a video game, I'm looking for many different things. Sometimes I want a compelling and challenging gameplay experience, but other times I'm simply looking for a good story. But usually what I want the most out of a game is to live out a fantasy. Something that is so immersive that you're able to roleplay as a specific character, not just in its most glorifying moments, but even in the mundane and the simple things. So not just a game that allows you to swing across New York City as Spider-Man, but something that would allow you to play as Peter Parker and experience what it means to have a secret life. To me, this is where video games are at their strongest compared to other mediums. They're not just stories, they can be entire worlds that you can interact with. And the more a game embraces this idea, the closer it gets to basically becoming a simulation or even a second life to some extent. Just take something like Lord of the Rings. If you watch these movies, you will witness an amazing story, but you won't be able to actively participate in it and you'll always remain a spectator. And for me, I often find this really frustrating with films, especially with worlds that I love and that I want to know on a more personal level. The world building will also suffer from the short runtime, even if the movies are four hours long, which is why books are usually better if you want a deeper understanding of a world. But if you take a game like Skyrim, now that's a completely different thing. You not only get thousands of pages of world building and dialogue, but you also get the opportunity to live in that world and forge your own path. But if there's one game that allowed me to live out a fantasy like no other was Red Dead Redemption 2. This is more than a game. It's an experience that immerses you into a believable and fully interactive virtual world. Yes, you could say that the main missions are too linear, which I kind of agree with, but the open world is in a league of its own. When I first played that game, I spent a full week without doing any story content. I just explored the map and engaged with the game's numerous mechanics. And every single one of them, even the minor stuff, is incredibly well crafted. This is a game where you can hunt, take a bath, eat food, get drunk, have a bounty on your head, do robberies, camp in the wilderness, play poker, get into trouble by insulting everyone you come across, and so much more. There's just an insane amount of detail and whether you play as a law-abiding citizen, a dangerous outlaw, or a literal serial killer, the game will react accordingly, which definitely makes it the most immersive world ever made, in my opinion. Which brings me back to Hogwarts Legacy. 
Ever since I saw the first Harry Potter movie, which was my introduction to that world, I wanted to go to Hogwarts. And I think that this is a dream that a lot of people share. Doing magic, exploring the castle, going to class, eating these insane looking feasts, trespassing in the Forbidden Forest, or buying school furniture in Diagon Alley, everything about it was so appealing to me. And sadly, I don't think that there's ever been a game that did this world justice. That's not to say that there's never been a good Harry Potter game, because I remember Chamber of Secrets and even Order of the Phoenix being quite good, but these games never really managed to capture what it means to be a student at Hogwarts on a truly meaningful level. But hopefully this is going to change with Hogwarts Legacy. So far we haven't seen proper gameplay, but judging by the reveal trailer, the leaked footage and also the game's website, this might be exactly what I've been looking for. According to the developers, players will experience life as a student at Hogwarts in the 1800s. They will grow their magical abilities by mastering spells, brewing potions and taming fantastic beasts. Hogwarts Legacy is filled with immersive magic, putting players at the center of their adventure to become the witch or wizard they choose to be. Players will also encounter missions and scenarios that will pose difficult choices and determine what they stand for. To me this sounds like a fully fledged RPG, and I think that if they pull it off not only in concept but also in the details, in the level of player agency and in the way you interact with the world, we're in for a treat. Because the possibilities of a game like that are insane. I mean just consider the fact that you will be able to customize your character, pick one of the four houses, choose between good and evil and decide what type of student you want to be. So yeah, I'm really freaking excited for this. Maybe we'll finally get to not just watch or read, but actually experience this wonderful world. And I know it's bad to get my hopes up like this, but honestly, I can't help it. Video games and the wizarding world are just made for each other. Of course, when you're dealing with Harry Potter, it's very easy to get lost in wishes and every time you let your mind wander a little bit too far, you immediately start to dream up the wildest stuff. But me personally, I just want to feel like a student. That's it. That's really the only thing I want. This goes back to the idea of fulfilling a fantasy. For me, this world isn't just about spells and broomsticks, it's going to the library, looking for secrets, buying candies at Honey Dukes, drinking a butterbeer in Hogsmeade, visiting Gringotts and things like that. I'm sure the game will succeed in the high concept stuff, but it's really the little things that will truly make it the wizard simulator I've been dreaming for my entire life. Will it live up to expectations? Only time will tell. Thank you guys for watching this video. Are you excited for Hogwarts Legacy? If not, tell me in the comments down below what is your most anticipated game of the year. Not sure exactly what's going to be my next video, but recently I've been playing Hollow Knight for the first time. I'm having an absolute blast. And then there's Dying Light 2 coming out at the beginning of next month. I'm trying to get my hands on a review copy at the moment. We'll see how it goes. If you enjoy my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. That's pretty much it. And I'll talk to you guys later.